Sir, if you would like to sit. Sir, sir I gotta get a little taller. Like Pardon? Do you want to sit? I can give you the microphone. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Oh, okay. A little stiff when I stand up. That's all. Right. Yeah, Greg Reaper's been reaching out for me, and I don't go to hell. <laughs> but uh, I have a question in my mind. Everything I own is in a trust, okay? And if I kick the bucket in plain English, I got two daughters, and everything in the trust goes to the two daughters. The two daughters have guns, they don't live in Connecticut, they're single, and they are both NRA trained from years ago, they hunted with me years ago, and if I have it in the trust, and the trust gets, you know, goes on to them, do they have to now go and get a background check in order to have those guns that I have, you know, that I even have to will to them, let's put it that way. Uh, so I guess I better do that before they, although they're not in the state right now, you know. They're not in the state? No. Have but I don't think they're in the state. But they're going to take the yeah. guns out of the state until they, they stay where they are. You, you can leave them to your daughters. Do they Pardon? have? You, you can, can leave your them. guns to your daughters. Yeah. You can leave an assault weapon to your daughters yeah. if you have one. Do they have a pistol permit in the state? No, no, I, I never bought it. Could they stop hunting, you know? Years ago, they may have to undergo a yeah. background check because I'm just when you leave a gun to somebody, they have to be legally entitled to this. Yeah. Yeah. But the transfer would happen in state because of that was where the probate would be. I assume yeah, it's probably worth having them do that. But did I misunderstand? We don't have to register, for, you know, like pistols now. Small guns. Not, not that I'm buying now, I mean from before. It's already registered when you bought. Pardon? When you, when you no, I bought them a long time ago. I don't register anything. Where did you buy them at a gun store? This person said to buy them. Did you buy them at a gun store? Was it personal or had to buy them? I bought them at a gun store. That's Back years ago. That record when I sent it, most likely. Years ago. So I never registered them. them. I bought one for each girl and I got three myself. No, this bill doesn't require you to do it. Pardon? No, you don't have to do anything under this bill as long as you had them before, what is it, 94, yeah. someone said? Before 1994. No, but I got, a, I got a right to carry thing for years, you know, whatever. No, you're, you're good. There. You're good. My daughter lives in Texas, see? She's 47 years old. She's a kindergarten teacher. They encourage her to carry guns. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're told, if you want to have at it. Now, I've got to tell you, I'm going to have to start making everybody laugh. You know, I talk about guns and protection. My daughter is about this tall. She weighs 100 pounds all wet, okay? And she lives by herself in a kind of a townhouse and apartment complex. She called me up two weeks ago, about 4 o'clock in the morning, and she's semi-hysterical. She's just about gathering her witch around her. I said, what the heck is the matter? She said, Daddy, she said, I woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning, somebody's trying to open the front door, and jamming her with a key, and I hear clicking and banging. And she said, I got so scared, I didn't know what to do. You know, she, she said, I was literally frozen stiff. I couldn't move, I was so scared. Then she said, I remember. She said, I went under the bed. I got my double barrel Rossi 410, which I gave her for her birthday. She said, I went down, sat on the couch, facing the door. I, hit, I said, you pull back both hammers? She said, both hammers. Just like you taught me. I said, that guy came through that door. She said, there's going to be blood on the rug. <laughs> and that, you know, it, it, it's, not funny, really. She was scared to death. But that, you know, she said, I don't think anybody could have got here in time because, you know, she, but then evidently it was somebody who had the wrong apartment was trying to jam it up the key. She can't use the key anymore. But okay, that's enough. But, uh, no, I, I feel somewhat like the rest of the fellas. But, Lenny, take positivity. You have a meeting like this, limit the times, otherwise it will be on to midnight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.